one of the old songs, there's a line about longing for the old plantation on the Swanee River. The plantation I was heading for was just outside of New Orleans, not too far from the Mississippi. There was another big difference. Hey, 19. Off the top this time. What do you say, lover? I can't recommend it. It's crooked. I feel that way about it, why play? If there was some other place I knew, I'd be there. Lover here has been dealing me seconds and thirds and flipping the deck on me. For all I know, that ring on his fingers and mirror, too. You've played your last hand here, Miss Banner. Today? Today, tomorrow, ever. I'm 200 in this game. Today. You're 2,800 in. You're not forgetting the tabs in the office for last week? Well, how can I pay them, lover, if you don't let me play? We're crooked. We cheat. You just informed the gentleman. So how do you expect to get well here? You'll just have to find another way to pay them. But you'll pay them. All I have to do is pick up the phone and call the police. You'll be out of business and my tab's along with you. Think that over. You'll pick up a phone and call a cab. And that's all you'll call. Don't play tough with me, Johnny Baroque. Goodbye, Miss Banner. I'm going back into town. I'll give you a ride if you like. I'd like. He's got it bad. Real bad. Johnny Baroque call me Miss Banner. Phyllis. I'll drive you home. Any cab driver could do that. Look, you found this place. You must know some others. Let's crawl a few. I don't know any others. In New Orleans? There are no gambling clubs in the city. You know that. Well, let's get up a private game. I've got a stake. We'll have fun. Please, lover. Sorry, Phyllis. Have to take you home. Why? That's by being paid for, by your mother. She said you'd probably be here. A private detective. Ye gad. Ah, the MBSP is with us again. That stands for Mrs. Banner's secret police. I invited Mr. Adams to come back for dinner. Well, not for a hand of Deuces Wild? Oh, I forgot. He doesn't gamble. Nobody gambles but me. I detest smart Alex. As the old song goes, you made me what I am today. She's reminding me that I once owned a gambling house. Your mother gambled on the right side of the table. Where's Frank? He was coming for dinner. I left him at the bookshop. Surprise? I really went to the bookstore. After Mr. Adams took the cuffs off and released me this afternoon. Probably to see if you could find a game anywhere in the neighborhood. That's the part that annoys me. My daughter, not only a compulsive gambler, but a bad one. It's my love, Mother dear. The only love you've ever let me keep. I've done nothing but try to protect you. You took one love away from me. I replaced it with another. Bender was scum. Your grandchildren might have been nice, though. If we'd had any. We're embarrassing Dan with our private quarrel. Doesn't he like children? Doesn't matter. I don't have any. No husband either. You invited him to this laundry airing hoedown? Well, come on in. Well, don't stop the war on my account. This is my nephew, Frank Banner, Mr. Adams. Glad to know you, Mr. Adams. Hello. Don't be glad to know him. He's the private investigator Mother put on my trail. Was the trail long and difficult? I'll let you know when I get to the end. You're at the end. I run my aunt's bookstore. 
It's your bookstore. Oh, I'm sorry. It's my bookstore. She just owns it. What about that little affair in Las Vegas? Is there any chance my delightful cousin will have to go to jail? A small chance. Oh, wonderful. Las Vegas? He followed me there. There was a new note of panic in your last wire for money from out there. I sent Mr. Adams. A foot race to the bank to make good on a check is one thing, Phyllis. Forgery is another. Will I have to go back? I should let you go back. Maybe that would do some good. No, they let me pick it up with your mother's money. On one condition. That you don't set foot in a Nevada casino again. It'd be a good idea if you made that in any casino. You sure he's a detective, Mama? Cut you high card, he's a reverend. Hello. This is Mrs. Banner. This is Joe Baroque. I used to run the club across the street. Well, of course I remember you, Joe. Even though I've been out of touch with that sort of thing for many years. I'm glad you remember me. You remember my little boy, Johnny? What are you talking about? Now, Dorothy Banner would never call the cops. But what about your daughter? What about her? She was out here this afternoon. She said she was going to call the cops, and Johnny didn't believe her. He went for a gun. And they shot him. Oh, Johnny was wrong going for a gun. The police were right. But whoever called the cops killed my son. <laughs> Johnny Baroque was just killed in a raid. His father thinks that you sent the cops out there. Did you? No. Liar. I didn't. Did his father threaten you? Joe Baroque is of the old school. He doesn't make threats. But if he finds the person who tipped off the police, that person's in trouble. Big trouble. I didn't. I tell you, I didn't. Do you want me to talk to Baroque? No, Dan, thank you. Send me your bill. I hope I don't need your help again, professionally. I had some other business to settle up. I stayed in New Orleans a couple of more days. Johnny Baroque was underground, six feet of it upstate. And Phyllis Banner was none of my business anymore, I thought. empty. I can't let you have a dime. Frank, let me work here with you. I know books as well as you do. There's enough work here to keep us busy. Please. I think I could kick it, Frank, if I just had something to do, something to keep me busy, keep my mind off it. Okay, Phil. If you're really sure that you want to work. But, uh, I know where there's a game going down the street, if you're interested. Where? You don't have to stake me. I've got enough to get in. I'll cut you in for half if I win. Just this one more whirl. When you swear off, you swear off, don't you, cousin? Please. I was kidding. I wouldn't know if a game was going on upstairs in my own living room. That was rotten. Look, I don't like the way your mother keeps extending a helping hand, but she did help me, and I'm grateful. So if helping you will repay her, you have a job here. If there's anything except cashier. Frank Banner. Oh. Yes, Aunt Dorothy, she's here. Yes, Mother. Checking? Let's do without the sarcasm, shall we? I'm through checking on you. A package came for you. Postmark Baton Rouge. Open it for me, will you, Mother? I'll hold on. Incidentally, I'm going to work here in the bookstore with Frank for a while. Hattie, will you open this, please? Just a minute. Just a minute. Oh, 
Oh, it's a book. See if there's a card in it, Hattie. Mother? Coffee? No, thanks. I couldn't stay at the house just yet. You don't really need me on this, Dorothy. Police are better on things like this. Hattie is dead, needlessly. Well, it could have been you. It was meant for me, of course. It was addressed to Phyllis. Yes, I know. Forget the police, though. I want you to handle this. There are things that I can't say to the police. What are you holding back? What didn't you tell the police? That I was talking to Phyllis on the phone when the package came. She asked me to open it. A dozen other times she told me furiously to leave her mail alone. Don't say it right out, Dorothy, unless you're sure. I don't have to tell you how far a compulsive gambler will go for money. She never refused to pick up her tab. She needs you. You don't know how close to broke I am. I told her that after you straightened out the Las Vegas mess. If she went on, the house would go, Frank's bookshop would go, everything would go. No more, I said, and I meant it. Dan, she's desperate for money. It's food to a gambler. You're wrong about this. I think you're wrong. One of three persons tried to kill me. I know it. Joe Baroque, your daughter. I haven't counted out my nephew, Frank. He was there in the shop. He has no motive. And he will inherit nothing except the shop. Joe Baroque, Frank, Phyllis. Find out which one. out of business. I drove out here to see you. Police? One of Lieutenant Strager's boys? No, but that's what I want to talk about. Friend of my boy, Johnny's. I knew him by sight. Joe. Excuse me a minute. Yes, we'll talk. You're very close to joining Johnny right this moment, Mr. Dan Adams. A name. Willie, Johnny's paper man tells me you left with Miss Banner the day Johnny was killed. Did you tip the police, Mr. Adams? No. Did Miss Banner? A uh, gun's the same mistake your son made. I want the truth. I don't care what happens to me. <coughs> you're very good. No, you're not the type to blow the whistle. I'm a private investigator working for Dorothy Banner as a friend. Ask your questions. The police couldn't find enough to take me in even. They will, if there's anything there. I don't have to prove I didn't send the bomb. They have to prove I did. But I'll tell you, I didn't. I wouldn't hurt Dorothy Banner or her daughter, unless I was sure they set up my boy. Lieutenant Strager tells me they planned this raid for over a week. No one had to send them here. So he said. <sighs> Give Dorothy Banner my regards. The police 
had three men going over this room with a vacuum cleaner. They didn't find enough of the bomb even to tell the title of the book. Well, that kind of lab work takes a long time. I wish just one person would ask me right out if, if I tried to kill my mother. She thinks I did. She didn't say so. She wouldn't accuse me to the police, make it public, any more than she'd believe I'd never gamble again, never lie again. I did tip the police, Dan, but then you knew that. Yes, but I wanted you to tell me. Phyllis, how long since you've been up to Baton Rouge? Your mother said the bomb came from Baton Rouge. A year at least. Well, think back about everyone you knew there. This may not have had anything to do with your gambling or Johnny Baroque. Romance, a jilted boyfriend, an angry wife. I haven't had time for it, Dan, as you know. I've been very busy these last few years with my hobby. I can't look at that without seeing Hattie. If only she could tell us. Maybe she just did, if you believe in such things. What is it? Well, it's a piece of the book that didn't burn. There's part of the title on it. Mm-hmm. Sure. Valley Storm, Fenton Richards' book. Do you have a copy of it? Someone's sure doing his or her best to lay this on old Frank's doorstep, huh? How so? Well, a bomb in a book? Now, I ask you, who has as many books as I have? Well, how about this particular book? Well, it's a kind of rare book. Not expensive, but hard to find because it's been out of print 20, maybe 30 years. Now, the records will show that I stocked a copy, one copy, and I still have it. Well, I guess I'll have to check every bookstore in New Orleans and Baton Rouge, find out who sold it. Of course, there's nothing that says a copy couldn't have been in the home of Joe Baroque or the home of his official bomb maker for years and years. Most of the bookstores in the French Quarter of New Orleans are within a small radius of each other. About the fourth shop, I began to believe Frank knew what he was talking about when he said it was a rare book. Most of the shops hadn't even heard of it. I'd about decided I'd spend the next day on the phone checking every store in the state if necessary. It wasn't necessary. May I help you? I'm looking for a copy of Fenton Richards' Valley Storm. Oh, yes, I have a copy. It's out of print, you know. Yes, I learned that, looking for it. Oh, that's strange. It isn't there. You sold it? Not sold. Gone. Well, maybe somebody bought it when you weren't here. It's my shop. I'm the only clerk, and I don't misplace things. Well, I can help you anyway. Well, maybe your records would show that you sold it and forgot. Definitely not. I need the sale. But Frank Banner, uh, down the street, Banner's bookstore, has a copy. We were discussing it only a little over a week or so ago. It may cost you a little bit more. His is a first printing, while mine was only a third printing. In any event, it won't be too expensive. I'll try Mr. Banners. Oh, Mr. Baroque recommended your shop. Mr. Baroque? Joseph Baroque? A very nice man. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you. The conversation with Josephine Wendell sent me right back to check out Frank Banner's copy of Valley Storm. Hunch was right. The book was what I needed to close out the case against Mr. Banner. The clerk thought I could find him in his rooftop apartment and obligingly pointed the way. Frank?
you could get yourself shot as a burglar. Unless you have a search warrant. Well, the door wasn't locked. Oh, well, you're still taking quite a liberty. I figured you'd be as happy as anyone if I proved you didn't do it. I sure will be. Didn't work out that way. I proved you did, Frank. Now, that gun isn't loaded. You can load it if you want. I don't think there'll be any powder in the shells, will there? I told you somebody was trying to lay this at my doorstep. I'm a perfect setup. I see you even dug out my service discharge, so you know I was in the Marines in a demolition squad. That's not all. That book downstairs, Valley Storm. Oh, what about it? It's still there. Josephine Wendell's copy from down the street, third printing, it's still there. You had a first edition. Man, who are you working for, Joe Baroque or Phyllis Banner? Well, maybe both of them. They'll be cleared. Well, not at my expense, they won't. Boy, you're way off. I'll take my chances with the police. I had no motive for killing Phyllis Banner. The bomb was sent to her. Oh, I can see how you figured. Looked like you couldn't miss. You knew your aunt had a bad habit of opening your cousin's mail. Did I? Even if you did get Phyllis and not your aunt, that'd still leave you the sole heir. And the way Phyllis was going through the family funds, it wouldn't have left much of an inheritance for you. So when Joe Baroque made that threat, it was just too good an opportunity to pass up, wasn't it? Well, you still got to get out of here with all those theories, and then they have to be proved. You're too absent-minded to be a killer, Frank. This ticket stub from a Baton Rouge theater, you used it as a bookmark. Don't you know the serial number will tell when you were there? You know, I was also a combat instructor in Korea. <laughs> I was sure I had it made, back to Coronado. Phyllis Banner was shocked about one thing. Her mother wanted to cut me high card, double or nothing, for my fee. 